Saint Emilion is unique. Unique in that its medieval labyrinths of tiny streets and alleys can still be roamed with incredulous anticipation. Unique in that its Romanesque cloisters, cellars, and churches can still be visited, touched, and marveled at. Finally, the most significantly unique in that it is the first wine growing area ever to be designated a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. Saint Emilion is a small town situated 35 kilometers northeast of Bordeaux. It is quite simply the most picturesque, magnetic, wonderfully definitive place that a wine lover could ever wish to visit. Viticulture was introduced to this fertile region of Aquitaine by the Romans and intensified in the Middle Ages. It is the born place of two wine lovers' favorites, Chateau Chevau Blanc and Chateau Ouzon. So Saint Emilion is a medieval town which was、uh, created some、uh, eight centuries ago, and this is overlooking the Dordogne Valley. Here we are on the top of the limestone plateau, and、uh, the little village is just spreading as the shape of an amphitheater down here. It has been listed as a World UNESCO site some ten、uh, years ago now. For not only the、uh, preservation of its village, but also the beautiful landscape surrounding it, composed of the vineyard. So this is basically、uh, one of the most beautiful areas in the Bono Vineyard that we can finally found in、uh, in the area. Whenever you go into the town, you will be struck by Saint Emilion's inherent harmony, the ochre stone house, and a bumpy rubber-made path tell you the town secret. And express centuries of history through architectural splendor. Saint Emilion owns the largest underground church and the catacomb in Europe, which is listed as one of the hundred ancient architectural inventions. We are right in the middle of the village, and it used to be the market square in the medieval period. So that there were a lot of inhabitants, different monks coming here and finding food and different products on the market. But nowadays, the main part of this square is the church, located just behind me. And this church has not been built, but carved out in the solid rock, such as a stone quarry. The purpose for this church was to、uh, welcome the pilgrims, the Christian pilgrims in Saint Emilion, to present them the relics of the patron saint, the Holy Emilion himself. And on the top of this church, excavated some eight centuries ago, a bell tower was built. And this bell tower is nowadays the second highest point in all the Bordeaux area. Anyway, this bell tower is 4,500 tons heavy, which represents about 900 elephants, one on the top of another one, which is far too heavy for a church, which is supported by some stone pillars inside. So it has been restored、uh, very well, so that when we will be inside, we'll see some part of those works. And this is nowadays the main monument in town. So here we are now into this underground church, carved out in the medieval period to protect the body, the bones inside a wooden box, the bones of the first inhabitant of the place named Emilion, and in order to protect him for ever and ever, and in order to the people over there to come and venerate him, it was carved out and there it was preserved. This church has been restored because it has suffered a lot from the bell tower. Remember, located up there, and nowadays this is one of the most superstitious places where to discover the underground Saint Emilion. Historically, Saint Emilion owes its origin to the eighth-century Breton monk Emilion, who arrived in the region to live and work at Benedictine monastery there. Loved for his patience. Forgiving nature and a dedicated service, Emilio subsequently retired to live out the rest of his life as a hermit on a nearby wooded hillside, a natural amphitheater that, ever since its first settlement, has carried his name. 
So the wine saint emilion is famous, the village is a little bit famous, but where does this name come? Well, Emilion was a monk, as you can see here, and he lived in this area, he was a hermit, that means living alone in the middle of a cave. The first inhabitant gave the name to the village, and the village gained, gave the name to the wine. Today, after a very turbulent political history of warring, exploration and repeated sackings, including a half century of near uninhabitation during the French Revolution, Saint Emilion now thrives from the liquid gold that's grown on the carpet of vines that drip the tongue like a green and a golden mantle. A mere 5,500 hectares of vineyards annually produce 36 million bottles of saint wine, the appellation being granted to the town itself and its eight related communities. The vineyards are small, on average a mere 7 hectares each, and are still mostly family-owned. The region boasts an impressive 1,200 of them. So the vineyard of saint emilion covers 7,500 hectares and we've got more than 800 different chateaux, wine estates. For the production of the saint emilion wine, which is only red wine, we need at least three main grape varieties. The Merlot grape variety, the Cabernet Franc and the Cabernet Sauvignon. In saint emilion as elsewhere on Bordeaux's so-called right bank, the Merlot grape is queen often regarded only as the softening balance to the mighty power and structure of Cabernet Sauvignon. Here the Merlot is the dominant grape of the cepage, typically 60% of the blend, the remainder being Cabernet Franc. Merlot is a large, somewhat brittle, luscious, fruity grape. It buds flowers and ripens early, makes spring forests an occasional hazard to be contented with. Being thin-skinned also makes Merlot brought to rot in very wet vintages, most notably in several of which that occurred in the 1960s. The thin skins provide fewer tannins but allow for greater sugar content, providing a basis for a well-structured, supple and alcoholic wine. St. Emilion's other main grape variety, Cabernet Franc, has similarly languished in the shadow of Cabernet Sauvignon, although during the 1960s was more widely planted. A fresh, herbaceous character typifies this grape, that although low in natural acidity and tannins, provides wonderful aromas of raspberry, violet, and those unmistakable pencil shaving essence that signify the best St. Emilion. And the particularities of Saint Emilion wine is something very velvety, very soft, but also very complex as far as the aromas are concerned. And the great chateaus we can see all around us right here are among the most famous in the world, such as Chateau Canon, Chateau Ozone, Chateau Angelus, located just around the village of Saint Emilion. In and around the Saint Emilion, there are four different geological areas, often indefinably termed as terroir, that impart slightly differing nuance to the wine that are grown on them. The most important is the limestone plateau upon which Saint Emilion is built. The vineyards planted here are the closest to the town and the most prestigious. Indeed, 11 of the 13 premier ground crews are situated within the patchwork of tiny walled enclaves that huddle around the fortified walls of the town. From here, we can see also Chateau Ozone, which is really, uh, at the top of the pyramid of Saint Emilion wines, the top of the top. And the black roof we can see in the distance is this Chateau Ozone. There, for one bottle, you have to pay minimum 1,000 euros. Hopefully, this is not the same price for all the chateaus and you can also find, find some family-run estates with cheaper wines. Falling away from the plateau is the Koto, a clay and a limestone slope that on its south and southeastern aspect also produces wine of 
great quality. To the north of Saint Emilion, in the direction of the prestigious vineyards of Pamro, lies a small terrace of clay and gravel, upon which Chateau Fiji and the illustrious Chateau Cheveu Blanc, the two premier Grand Crus, are situated. Finally, the geological flood plain of the River Dodo, a sandy, gravel-rich, low-lying area, is the home to most of the generic, basic-quality Saint Emilion vineyards. On the third Sunday of June each year, the festival of budding is held by the drain. Trade, a council that has been in existence since the year 1199, undertakes the administration of all things about wine in St. Emilio. The colorful robed trade walk the street with much pomp and ceremony, eventually arriving at the church to give thanks for yet another successful vintage. Similarly, on the third Sunday of September, they celebrate Grape Picking Festival, announcing the bounds like those of a wedding for the forthcoming start of the harvest. It is at this celebration that new members of the Brotherhood of Dread are inducted, empowering them to go forth to become ambassadors of St. Emily wine to the world at large. Neither of these charismatic ceremonies, nor their picturesque settings, serves to overshadow the superb wine of Saint Emilion, which is rightly judged to be one of the finest in the world. The wine of Saint Emilion does not exist, for there is not one wine, but a variety of wines. The appellation produces a tremendously wide range of wines from the most humble but nevertheless delicious wines to the most prestigious growth which can age for decades. While still young, Saint Emilion is deceptively Moorish and approachable, a characteristic of the flesh sweetness of the mallet grape. Black currant, blackberry, raspberry, vanilla and aromas multiply to beguile the novice and tempt the connoisseur alike. However, with 10 years of careful cellarage, a different Saint Emilion emerged, a stately, gamey, polished wine of complex, subtle, balanced fruit. Maturity adds class to the wine that, while it's still somewhat feminine, soft, full-bodied, ripely fruited flavor, displays the opulence admired by wine lovers the world over.